Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. A week ago, my brother came to visit and he wanted a demo. He wanted a demo of a basic box wood turning. Didn't want to do it himself this time. I hope he will next time. But a basic box. So, what is a basic box? Well, in this case, it's end grain turned in from a solid piece of wood, split in two, hollowed on the bottom, hollowed in the top, joint fitted together, which in this case is suction grip and then finish the top finish the bottom it's a good basic wood turning project uh, this isn't the one that is so but let's make a good basic wood turned box I've mounted this small block of ash wood between centers for spindles such as this one I do not cut off the corners I feel it would be more work and more risk than simply using my bowl gouge Another tool could be a spindle roughing gouge. That gouge would be nice, but expensive. I'll keep using my large bowl gouge to rough round the spindle. Next, I need to square off the ends and cut a tenon on both ends. My skew is my preferred tool for this with a peeling cut. Then, part the piece in two pieces at about two-thirds the height for an approximation of the golden mean. As I part it off, I make sure I stop BEFORE cutting clear through the spindle. Bad things happen when I go too far with the wood still trapped between centers. Instead, now that I have tenons, I can mount the wood in my chuck before finishing the part off. With the top mounted to the chuck, I can remove the remaining stub in the center before hollowing with a spindle gouge. The flute is nearly closed and I work from the center out. For this depth and with end grain, this is short work. I'm finishing off with a box scraper. After sanding the inside, I'm finishing the inside with my mix of beeswax and mineral oil for a finish that does not stink. After figuring a good balance between the center cavity and a mortise for the lid, and the outer wall thickness, I'm using a box scraper to cut a mortise. I check for parallel sides of the mortise with a pencil held against the mortise and sighting the bed lathe bedways. Once the pencil aligns with the edge of the bed, the side of the mortises are parallel. I touch up with a little wax oil mix. Switching now to the bottom of the box, this time I'm drilling a 3 8 inch pilot hole to the approximate depth for hollowing. This will make it easier to hollow to a specific depth with the spindle gouge. Doing this much first may relieve some of the stress in the wood, but I don't want to finish hollowing until after I've cut the tenon. Now for the tenon. As usual, this is a repetitive series of test, cut, test, cut, until it fits. I first get close with my skew, then a slight taper on the end of the tenon. With this test, I'm close. Still, very slowly, I lengthen the tenon and reduce its diameter ever so slightly. Test and go a little more. In the end, my tenon was slightly too long, leaving a gap between the top and the bottom. To fix this, I shaved off just a little more off the top of the tenon. With the tenon finished, I can finish hollowing with a box scraper. I had just a little trouble with the box scraper at this depth. Raising my tool rest and taking very light cuts helped. Then I quickly sanded and finished the inside. With the top mortise fitted to the bottom tenon, I can start shaping the exterior. Some of this I do with the top and bottom mounted together. Some is apart. Forming a bead near the joint is better apart so I can see the edge more easily. This is spindle gouge work supplemented a little by the skew.
This time I'm able to sand and finish the bottom before doing any finish cuts on the top's perimeter. When it's time to do the top, I wrap the joint with a little masking tape to help keep it together. However, tape does not stick well to mineral oil and wax, but my box survives. My box is close to being done now that the top is finished. However, while my suction joint is nice for a wood turner, I don't like it for a regular user who needs to open the box with only one hand. I'm relieving the tenon with my skew with a scraping cut. Next, I've inverted the bottom into the chuck jaws. It fits. Alternatively would have been a faceplate jam chuck. Now I can carefully reduce the bottom. My rubber stopper is a bit fat, but my spindle gouge takes care of that. I cut just a bit from the edge to lift the box off the surface. What to finish with, of course, my beeswax and mineral oil. It's about time to make a new batch. After signing, I'm buffing with Tripoli, White Diamond, and Canuba Wax. My buffs are mounted to a spindle extender with a 3 8 inch bolt hole. I've turned a spacer to fit the center of the buff and allow a bolt through it. Lock washers and nut complete each buffing wheel. This finishes my private demo for my brother. He plans to give the box to his granddaughter. The ash has a pretty color and grain pattern. Buffing gave it a nice shine. The weight feels good and the joint is about right. Just a little loose to allow humidity changes. Boxes are fun and easy if you follow this process. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.